Hey everybody, happy Sunday to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. I'm going to update you what's going on with this pattern. It is bringing some severe weather as we get closer towards this transition. Now you are going to go on some warmer temperatures, even some 90s as this moves further towards the east. But this cold front come through is going to bring some nicer weather, some cooler temperatures. I'm not showing a bunch of freezing temperatures. I will go through that. But it will start bringing our severe weather with it as well. Now so far we have severe weather for today, tomorrow, and the next day but i can see it adding up even more for the upper midwest as we go through the beginning of this transition so you never been here before make sure you subscribe i am all year long i'm update you on what you can expect and when you can expect it now we're still going to be in this pattern during this transition where it's bringing cooler temperatures to the west side of the u.s as we start getting on this high ridge as it goes all the way towards the east and that trough moves on in now we still have that dip coming all the way from the fourth all the way towards the 10th now the euro has shown that it's not going super far it is bringing some temperatures but just like we've been going over guys the cooler temperatures are going to be for the upper midwest the great lakes ohio valley and the northeast the real frozen temperatures won't go too far to the south now it has been depicted by a couple models hinting that something really cold is coming so i'm gonna go through your information now you see the gfs does go all the way towards the south and east with his push all the way down, bringing cooler temperatures further down into Florida all the way towards the Gulf. So when you look at your latest information on your NA or your North Atlantic Oscillation, when you get a big high ridge in the Northern Atlantic, usually there's a high pressure blocking right there, and that goes into a negative pattern that brings a deeper trough into the U.S. You can see here that GFS is all by itself on that deep trough. The rest of the models are agreeing that it's not going that deep, guys. Now, this is going to bring a lot of nice weather, but it's also bringing some severe weather. So you can see with your winds aloft, it's going to start bringing severe weather. We did all these winds aloft, rotating some of these thunderstorms, start bringing severe weather, hail, damaging winds, and possible tornadoes as we go into this transition. But you can see with HRRR there, a cape, or convection, a lift, really starts adding up as we go into monday night start bringing our chances for severe weather and then it starts transition for tuesday as well we just can't see that far it's going to be also for this region and working its way towards the upper midwest i do see this transitioning towards the northern half of the u.s remember my winter outlook a while back guys the northern half of the u.s is going to be above average so this is going to bring thunderstorms a lot further to the north and you can see this with the euro as you go into monday a lot of lightning strike starts building up as it starts transitioning we had low pressure to high pressure and those winds aloft bringing severe weather also for tuesday and you see how it goes all the way from the south all the way to the upper midwest you can see also for wednesday it will form up in the south central a lot of lightning strikes bring a lot of storms bringing a lot of that rainfall that y'all do once so i will go over what you will have as well and that will continue as you go through wednesday as well into thursday so just going by ace triple r just the next 48 hours bringing possible damage and winds in this region towards the four corners and northern as this transitions to the east bringing a lot of 40 50 even some higher elevations maybe getting up to 60 miles per hour wind gusts all the way from the four corners into wyoming south dakota nebraska just as it transitions is bringing the storms and some damage and winds with it and possible chances for hail now as we go into tuesday and beyond then our tornado chances are going to grow so you can see all this from national weather service so for today there's no chances for tornadoes it will be chances for wind and hail in these cities and states you see below for tomorrow, for Monday, the tornado chance is going to start growing just a little bit, but it is going to stretch out. So far, here's your cities at risk for tornadoes so far in New Mexico for tomorrow. But there's going to be chances for wind and chances for hail to start growing as we start into this transition, starting with tomorrow. On Tuesday, this is going to grow with your severe weather. Now it's stretching all the way out, so this will grow as far as your tornadoes, your damaging winds or hail as well as we go into tuesday we'll update you first thing in the morning so far here's your cities and states at risk on tuesday for severe weather and i expect this to ramp up and maybe get wednesday up here for the upper midwest as well now you can see the transition on the national weather service how much rainfall you're gonna be getting you see it adding up for florida southern florida all the way for today and tomorrow you're gonna be getting a couple inches also towards the upper midwest and the south central see how that starts adding up that's going to add up to even more so far it's only until wednesday morning 
at 7 a.m. And this is bringing a good bit of rainfall, a little bit over an inch for North Dakota, but it's going to start bringing in for New Mexico, start bringing in for the panhandle of Texas, one and two inches, and going east, southeast. Also for the north central, y'all are a little bit on y'all drought as well, and it's going to start bringing some rainfall for y'all also. But this is going to keep adding up for southern Florida, especially over towards Miami area, from one to two inches still coming to at least Monday. At least till Monday, you're going to see some more of this rainfall. Now, just for the next seven days, as it starts transitioning over, you see it bringing storms according to the Euro up Midwest, not a whole bunch. Some places are getting one to two inches and a little bit for the New England states, maybe somewhere is getting maybe one or two inches, maybe on the edge. Bring a lot of rainfall towards the South Central. Now you see the difference with the GFS. Next seven days, you see how it shows not a lot going towards Texas, and it's a lot heavier with the Euro. Other differences, you can see also the intercoastal northeast. It's showing a very heavy amount of rainfall coming with those storms when the Euro is not showing that as heavy. But don't worry, Texas, because National Weather Service and Weather Prediction Center does not believe that neither. So once you go from three days to five days, then it's going to start adding up within five days any warriors from one to two inches of rainfall starting adding up as it comes towards Austin, Dallas, starting making its way towards Houston. And as you go seven days, maybe go a little bit further south down Texas, but a little bit further into Louisiana. Louisiana, Mississippi is in a drought as well, all the way towards Lafayette, Baton Rouge, all the way towards Jackson, Mississippi. Exceptional drought, but it is going to help out with Texas, and it will go maybe further to the south towards southern Texas as you go from five to seven days with an even heavier amount. Five to seven days usually changes, so I will keep you updated. But you can see from your drought monitor that you are in extreme drought in all of this red in the northwest. Also over here for the four corners. Now, this is not going to add up to too much rainfall for y'all, so this isn't going to help y'all drought too much. Now, the northern central, you're in exceptional and extreme drought with the red and the dark red. This is going to help just a little bit but it's really going to pocket towards the south. Over here where you have the extreme drought, the exceptional drought, over here towards Austin, Dallas, towards Houston, Lafayette, Baton Rouge, towards Jackson, Mississippi. This whole area right here, we do have rainfall coming. So hopefully it helps out with your drought. So far, it's looking like Louisiana and Mississippi. Not too much rainfall coming in your area so far because these cool fronts coming down is going to bring less precipitation and drier air. Now, starting with today, you are going to start feeling the 90s come all the way up to the upper Midwest. This is going to be your highs for today. And for tomorrow, it's going to shift a little bit further to the east, but you're still going to be dealing with a lot of 80s and 90s in a lot of places. Now, this is going to continue to go to the east as we get this cool front coming in. So when we're talking about these temperatures and which model is correct, you can see here with the Euro, we do have this cold air coming in in the AO, the Arctic Oscillation, all the way from the 4th, all the way to the 8th through the 10th, with the 5th through the 7th being the coldest. Then we're going to go on a little warm up again. Remember I told y'all after this cold front, you have warmer temperatures coming back. And you can see with all the models that they do agree with this cold front coming in. Now the Korean and the Canadian, these two take it the most extreme. Take it a little bit longer going on. But you see right here with the URL and the GFS, they are agreeing that it is coming right back into that warm up. I show you this because the Korea model, I don't find that too dependable, especially with the tropics. It just goes haywire, even worse than GFS. And the Canadian model is showing way worse temperatures than what GFS and Euro is showing. So you can see the latest update on Weather Prediction Center all the way from the 7th through the 8th. You're going to have slight cold temperatures passing through. And then from the 8th through the 10th, it is going to go all the way towards the East Coast. And you can see the update with National Weather Service for you. Next 6 to 10 day temperature probability. Instead of being average temperatures, now they have it below average while you're building that high ridge on the West Coast and you start getting them warmer temperatures. And it is going to last all the way from 8 to 14 days as this transitions towards the east northeast with the coldest temperatures and the warmest temperatures will build now remember these warm temperatures from this high ridge these above average temperatures this will transition again towards the east after this cold front and you can see this here from the urals you have the above average temperatures the below average temperatures as we go through the days and then this cold front comes through and it is cooler temperatures it is well below average temperatures but it's not way below average temperatures. You're not seeing a lot of that purple or even that white getting in there. You're just seeing a little bit of that blue for below average as it comes down through the 7th and transitions out through the northeast for the 8th 
maybe even the ninth last and for the inner coast northeast, maybe along the coast. That's it. And then we're going to start going towards that warm up. Now you see the difference with the GFS. It brings a little bit cooler temperatures further towards the south. Instead of going out through the northeast, it's bringing more of a southern dip, a little bit cooler, a little bit further to the south, a little bit colder temperatures, not much, and it goes right back out. Then we get that warm up that does transition over and you get those warmer temperatures again. So to get an idea of what National Weather Service is thinking, you can see right here on the 7th for Saturday that they have some high to mid 30s to some 40s moving in through the upper Midwest and the Central Plains. So you can see why I don't want to use the Canadian. It's not showing anything like the, like the National Weather Service is showing. And it's trending with the Korea model and not the Euro or the GFS. It's bringing in some 20s on that day. And the wind chills are going to feel like in the teens for a lot of people. This is only by the Canadian model. So if you see this today, you'll see this is not what's trending. Now the GFS sees these temperatures in the mid to high 30s coming into the 40s. 50s for the south and the 60s for the deep south. But it sees it a day sooner. It sees it for this Friday on the 6th. And the 7th start bringing towards that deep dip towards the southeast. And maybe bringing some wind chills with that as it goes through the 7th. Start maybe bring some 20s for the upper midwest as it goes deeper in the south. Then as you go towards the 8th, staying on that deep trough all the way towards the southeast. That's the difference between the GFS and the Euro. The Euro is taken out through the Northeast. And showing maybe on Sunday on the 8th by GFS, it could be some wind chills bringing y'all possibly in the 20s. Remember, this is with the GFS. This is not with the Euro. Now, the Euro is seen like National Weather Service and Weather Prediction Center is showing. We have some mid to high 30s going into the 40s, then some 50s and some 60s, maybe even some 70s still towards the Southeast as you go through this Saturday on the 7th and bring in not too bad of wind chills. Maybe some 20s can move through the upper Midwest for Saturday only. It will warm right back up. It will be in the 70s again, even the 80s. A lot of people over here that will be in those cooler temperatures will be in the 50s and maybe reaching the 60s for your highs for Saturday. As you go through Sunday, it is coming through all the way to the southeast, but it's not bringing those cooler 40s like the GFS is showing. Showing it will stay in the 50s, which is cold enough for the south as it transitions through with some 40s and not bringing too bad of wind chills. Might feel like you're in the 30s, the high 30s for the Midwest, but everybody else staying about right. As you move through Sunday, then you got your high temperatures and it's all going to warm right back up as you go through the day. So this cold front is not no seriously Arctic blast. It's not staying for your highs, guys, but it is a nice little cool front of some cooler air that is coming. Now, as you go through Monday, same thing. Maybe some 40s are now going to start reaching a little bit of the northern half of the deep south. That's about it. Everybody else is still in their 50s. So still Sunday and Monday is going to be your coolest days, guys, all the way from the 8th through the 10th. Still bringing those 40s through, but now I'm showing the wind chills are not going to be that bad as we go through for Monday. Now, as we go through our highs, it is going to raise right back up. Because we do have this transition coming right behind this where these warmer temperatures are coming right back, guys. You can also see here on your winds aloft, that after we deal with the severe weather all the way from Monday for Tuesday, you can see how it transitions to the upper Midwest right here. Even start getting that trough right there, bringing that severe weather. I think there will be more severe weather as we go through maybe for Tuesday afternoon, maybe it'll upgrade into Wednesday on that transition. And you see as we go further, it starts bringing some more winds for the upper Midwest as we go through Friday and towards the Northeast a little bit as we go through Saturday. So this could bring more severe weather as we go through this transition. And that is your update, guys. I will bring you the latest information as I seem to find it out there. So far, this is what the trend is going to be with these temperatures. Then we got the warm-up coming right back. So remember, this will bring some severe weather in between this transition. Thank you so much for your time. Hope you have a very blessed Sunday. I hope I didn't keep you all too long for today. And before you go, Romans 14, 1 through 3. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Another who is weak eateth herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. 
And let him which eateth not judge him that eateth, for God hath received him. Amen. Let us not judge anybody, guy, because who are we to judge by all means? We're all sinners, all by the grace of God, and still live every single day by his grace and by his mercy. Amen. So let's love one another. Let's try and help one another every day we can. We never know when the last day is going to be our last day. So God bless all of you. Have a very blessed day. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And I pray he always blesses you every day of your life, you and your families, forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen.